So you're speaking to your friends and they're talking about licensing requirements and real estate, insurance, uh, accounting, nursing, all these different aspects. And finally, you get to a conversation around securities licensing. So like like a lot of the industry, there's a mystery behind it, but um, it, it's a little easy because it's national versus state by state. So let's uh, let's get involved uh, in, a little bit in the mystery behind securities licensing. So first, let's start with the uh, main regulators in the securities industry. So there's the Securities Exchange Commission or the SEC. Uh, they are a U.S. government agency. They, believe it or not, do not require any licensing. The federal government itself doesn't require licensing. However, what the SEC did do is delegate uh, licensing requirements, especially in the securities industry, to what's called SROs. SRO stands for self-regulatory organization. So it's not part of the government, but they would kind of like police themselves. And the largest uh, of all the SROs, not some, not the only one, but the largest is called FINRA, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, which uh, is sort of a combination of two older terms called the NASD, National Association of Security Dealers, and the New York Stock Exchange. So let's talk first about FINRA. Now, there are four be- between the securities and the futures business that will have some licensing requirements. So let's go through each one. Spending time firstly on FINRA. Okay, now FINRA really has three different kind of types of licensing examinations. And we'll talk more about the details of all these different exams in future podcasts. There are just so many interesting topics we can discuss in the financial service industry. There's a never ending um, you know, list of topics we can talk about. But first, they're going to be just more of an overview, not that much detail on any one exam or any one requirement. So FINRA has kind of three types of exams. One, those that are generally open to anyone, and that's something new and exciting, called the SIE, Securities Industry Essentials Examination, sort of like a co-requisite. And uh, we're going to have another podcast discussing specifically uh, the SIE and some of the exam restructuring that happened in late 2018. But for right now, one is the SIE, a sort of like a basic exam, an overview. And then we have what's called rep exams and principal exams. The representative exams are those examinations that allow you to sell, create research, banking, investment banking, things of that nature. Uh, and then we have the supervisor's exams called principal's examinations. Those are the three again. Three sections are exams open to anyone. There's only really one basic one called the SIE, rep exams, and then principal exams. Now, the rep exams, now known as top-off exams, are comprised with the series 6, 7, 22, 57, 79, 86, and 87, 82 and 99. I know there's a lot of numbers there. So just a brief overview of each of those exams. And each of those exams will permit someone to provide some type of service to clients, both institutional and and retail clients. And uh, again, in order to take any of these examinations I'm about to tell you, you have to be what's called sponsored by a FINRA member for a member means member of FINRA. And again, uh, one of our next podcasts, we'll talk more in detail about what what a member really means. So, Series 6 is for investment companies like mutual funds and variable products like variable life insurance and variable annuities. Series 7, general securities, is any type of security sales. The 22 is only what's called direct participation programs or limited partnerships. The 57 is a requirement for equity traders. The 79 is a requirement for investment banking. The 82 is private security sales. And the 86 and 87 are research analyst examinations. And the 99 is operations professionals. So I know there's a lot there. The the main ones that most people take would be the three, series six, series seven, and Series 7. Now, those are the three most popular examinations. Some of people take a multitude of exams, and I'll kind of talk about that in a few minutes. Okay. 
Next up are the principal's examinations. They are required for those individuals who supervise the rep exams. And I'll mention a couple of those. The series four is called the ROP or registered options principal exam. And that is a requirement for individuals who supervise people who buy and sell or trade options contracts. The series nine and 10 are sales supervisor exams. So they would be in a lot of ranch offices and they would be supervising the people who sell securities. And there's a good number of people that take the uh, nine and 10. The series 14 and 16, uh, not that many, many people take. The 14 is a compliance officer's exams based upon those people who supervise compliance professionals. And then the 16 is known as a supervisory analyst examination required of someone who's going to approve research reports by a brokerage firm or member firm. Then we have a very popular one called the Series 24 examination. And the Series 24 examination is a general securities principles examination. And then lastly, we have the Series 26 and 27. The 26 are for those individuals who supervise uh, investment company sales, like mutual funds and variable contracts. And lastly, the very exciting Series 27, otherwise known as the FINOP exam, Financial and Operations Principles Examination. So those are the main rep exams and principal exams that are administered by FINRA. Okay, next up is going to be the state required exams and we'll go through that next now before we get to the specific state exams and i'll mention those in a, in a minute is even though there are three other entities that create examination questions all of the exams are administered by finra so these other entities provide their exam questions to finra and FINRA sort of like takes the administrative action on all these different exams and even though finra is the administrator the actual entity that where you take the exam is a testing company called Prometric. So Prometric is the place where you take the exams. The exams are administered by FINRA. FINRA has some of their own tests, but also acts as the administrator for the three others. Okay, next up is NASA. Not the space people. It's the North American Securities Administrators Association. And what they are is a group of uh, an association of state administrators. Now, each state has its own securities regulation, but the securities industry did things differently than other industries. Instead of having people take one exam for every state they're going to sell securities, there's one general exam that you would take for all states. So it could have been where if you're selling securities in both, let's say, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, you would have to take three different exams. It doesn't exist that way in the securities industry. It's one test for all, you know, for all 50 states and any territory. Now, there are three exams created by NASA, the Series 63, the Series 65, and the Series 66. Now, the 63 is required if you're going to be registered as what's called an agent in the state. So, in other words, if you're only going to be selling security products, you would need most likely to take three exams. One, the SIE is a co-requisite with, let's say, general securities, let's say the Series 7. And then if you're selling securities in any of the states, the state would require you to take an agent test, and that would be the 63. Now, the Series 65 is if someone's going to be receiving fee income, not transactional-based compensation. So an agent or security sales is someone that's going to basically receive compensation based upon transactions. If someone's going to receive a fee based upon advice, they're known as an investment advisor. But that's the name of the firm. This is a very common misconception. People will say, I'm an investment advisor. Or I'm an investment advisor. I said, no, you're not. The firm is an investment advisor. You are known as an investment advisor representative. So it, it sort of works like this. If you are a registered rep at a firm, you're a registered representative. The firm is a broker dealer. In state law terminology, you're an agent of that broker-dealer. 
if you're going to receive fee income uh, based upon usually assets under management, how much money uh, the person is managing, then you would be considered an investment advisor representative. So the states require you to take a series 65. So years ago, someone said, well, wait, wait, if I'm going to be selling securities and receiving fee income both, you're telling me I would have to take two exams for the state level. I'd have to take both the series 63 and the series 65. And for many years, that's what was done. And then years later, NASA created a new exam called the 66, which is a combination of the 63 and 65 exams. So let's say you re- you started a career path and you're going to be a retail financial advisor. You're going to be selling securities to individuals and also selling uh, asset management fees as well, both. Well, in this case, like a lot of new reps, you would have to take three exams. One, the SIE. Two, the Series 7, let's say. And then three, the Series 66. And many new reps, those are the three exams they take. The SIE, the Series 7, and the Series 66 examination. Those are the the three main ones uh, that that most retail brokers take. If you're not going to receive fee-based income, like we discussed earlier, only transactional-based, like commissions or markups or markdowns, things of that nature, then uh, you would take, let's say, the SIE, the 7, and the 63. In fact, many people on the institutional sales side that sell securities to banks, insurance companies, pension funds, large investors, many of them take the SIE, the 7, and the 63. So third up on our list of entities that create examinations is the MSRB, the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board. And they are an SRO that has no enforcement power, that creates rules, regulations, procedures in the municipal securities industry that only deal with municipal securities, securities issued by state and local governments and and, and municipal authorities and agencies. Now, they have a number of different exams. uh, And I'm going to separate the exams on two fronts. One is the security sales side and two is the municipal advisory side. So, on the securities sales side, they have one rep test, the Series 52, and they have two principal exams, the 51 and the 53. And let me explain the differential. Okay. The Series 52 is required by someone who's going to be only selling municipal securities or only transacting business, certain types of business in municipal securities. So, If someone had a career path of only selling municipal securities, that's it. They would take the SIE, the Series 52 top off or Series 52 exam, and possibly the Series 63 exam. Those would be the career path there, which is a very infrequently uh, used career path. But some individuals might have to take more than one exam. So let me give you an example, which might happen, and that is someone is selling securities, all types of securities, and they have a Series 7. And then they're going to now have a new career path of, let's say, only trading or providing research on municipal securities. Since they specialize only in municipals, and it's not just sales, it's outside of sales, they may be required to take the Series 52. And the two other exams on the municipal level, on the security side, are the 51 and 53. There's a product called 529 plans, known as municipal fund securities. If you're only going to supervise the sales of those individuals, you would take the 51. And if you're going to supervise municipal securities and, and, and only municipal securities, you would take the Series 53 examination, known as the Municipal Securities Principles Exam. Now, lastly, we're going to discuss 
the two exams required for a municipal advisor. That's a relatively a newer concept where the, uh, the, the regulatory framework now is if you advise states, cities, counties, on, advise them, not sell securities, but advise them, you're considered a municipal advisory firm and the people who perform the work are known as municipal advisors. They have to take and pass the Series 50 and the newer principal exam for municipal advisors which was created in 2019, is known as the Series 54 examination. And at the end of this podcast, I'm going to go through a couple of items where various careers would require different uh, different positions. I'll give you a few examples, but there's countless ones. Okay. Last but not least is the NFA, National Futures Association, and they administer exams for the futures or commodity business. You can use the word commodities and futures interchangeably. And they have four exams, but one main one. The main one is the rep test called the Series 3. So if you're going to buy and sell futures contracts, then you would need to take and pass the Series 3 examination. If you're going to supervise those people, you may need to take what's called the Series 30. And there are two other very infrequent user use exams, mainly one's called the Series 31, which is required if someone only going to be selling what's called a managed future. But the main one is the Series 3 examination. Many people, when they, uh, when they get hired by a securities firm, brokerage firm, they get very excited. I'm going to take all these different exams. I'll be able to do all these different things. And in many cases, it doesn't actually work that way. In many cases, not every case, but in many cases, the firm kind of tells you what exam you need based upon the jobs you're going to be performing. So at any, every brokerage firm, there is a department known as compliance. And compliance is responsibility is to make sure you, quote unquote, comply with all the securities laws and regulations. Generally within compliance, there's a separate group called registration and or licensing, which handles the administrative and, and the compliance functionality of what exams people need, when they should take the exams. And, and in our company, Securities Training Corporation, it is usually the first line of individuals who we deal with when they tell us, hey, Hey, Todd, um, we need to have these people licensed. They're going to be selling this product. Therefore, they need this test. You know, the, generally that works. That's what STC does. I mean, even though we're, you know, we're a training company, we generally talk to people about what licensing requirements they need. Uh, we, we generally always tell them to check with their firms, but we receive a lot of calls on this. We provide guidance on this. We're very knowledgeable on this. We've been doing it for years. Generally, that's what happens. So let me give you a couple of examples. I already gave some examples before, but let me give you a couple of other examples which might help. Um, Let's say someone gets a job with an insurance company, and the insurance company allows you to offer insurance and certain securities products. And you get the job, and they say, okay, uh, take the insurance exams. Now, we're going to do another podcast at a later date talking about the difference between insurance pre-licensing and securities, but you've taken some insurance licensing in, let's say, one or two states. Fair enough. And then you said, okay, I'd like to sell mutual funds. Well, mutual funds are a type of investment company. That's a general heading. And in order to sell investment companies or mutual funds, you need a Series 6. So you say to the firm, here's what I'm looking to do. And the firm says, okay, in order to sell that product, you need to take the Series 6 or Series 6 top off as it's known, but there's a prerequisite for that, and that's the SIE. Now, most people take the SIE first. It's a base exam. Then they take the Series 6. And because you're receiving uh, transactional-based compensation, you would also need, as far as the states are concerned, the states would require you to have at least one test, and that one test would be the 63. That's for you know, selling mutual funds. Now, the person at the branch who's selling that mutual funds has to be supervised. Well, one type of supervisor would be something we talked about earlier is a Series 26 person who would supervise the sales of mutual funds and things of that nature. It doesn't mean that's the only license they have, but that's the, that would be someone who's only someone working in an insurance office only selling that one product could be supervised by someone who holds a Series 26 license. Now, let's say that person says, well, you know what? 
I have clients who also want to purchase college savings plans, 529 plans. Well, you can sell 529 plans with a Series 6 license, but a Series 26 person can't supervise those sales. That person who's supervising or has a 26 license would now need to take, let's say, a Series 51, which allows them to supervise the sales of municipal fund securities or 529 plans. There's a lot of information here. And one other thing that's beyond the scope of this podcast, but there are certain licenses that someone would have that would allow you to supervise the sale of a many different securities products. Let me give you another example of that. So you walk into a branch, you go into a branch of any large brokerage firm, and there are, let's say, 50 brokers, 20 brokers, 100 brokers, all selling a variety of securities products. You see someone there that's the manager, or there might be more than one manager. And that person says, well, I supervise salespeople. Well, what license do you have? Well, I have the Series 9 and 10 license. Now, the Series 9 and 10 allows you to supervise the sales of a variety of securities products. So, for example, the Series 9 allows you to supervise the sales of option contracts. The Series 10 allows you to supervise the sales of other securities products besides options, stocks, bonds, even municipal bonds. So any securities product being sold in that branch could be supervised by someone who has a Series 910. Now, people say, well, Todd, what about someone who's only selling 529 plans? You said they could have a 51. I said, yes, they could. But a Series 10 is a general security sales supervisor, which allows you to supervise sales of any securities products, even municipal securities, 529 plans, corporate securities like stocks and bonds, things of that nature. So there's there are certain exams that are sort of general, which allows you to supervise sales or transactions of all products. And there are some that only allow you to sort of like limited exams like a 51 or a 26 that only allow you to supervise the sale of like a specific product. Another example uh, uh, of a new person is a person gets hired by an investment banking firm, a large investment bank, and they're going to be selling and working in the equity sales or trading department. They're going to sell stocks or trade stocks on behalf of large corporate customers. They would need to take, of course, the SIE, most likely the Series 7 and the Series 63. And let's say after a year or so on the job or right away even, the firm says, well, you're also, besides selling security, equity security stocks, you're also going to be trading. So now you need to become an equity trader. And that would require you to take another test called the Series 57. Interesting. And if you're now going to be offering or selling futures contracts, you would have to take the Series 3 examination. So it, it, it could keep exploding and different tests could be, could be required as your job function change. Uh, another example is a person gets hired by a brokerage firm to work in the operations area, and they're going to be kind of a, sort of like a team leader, not an, just an employee, but supervising a small group. Well, they would most likely be required to take the SIE, the Series 99 Operations Professionals Exam, and in many cases, the Series 63 exam. So the number of possibilities is, is a lot in terms of what licenses you need to take. Very exciting. So there will be future podcasts on licensing. Uh, our, one of our next ones is, is going to be on the SIE, Securities Industry Essentials Exam, and the uh, restructuring that was done in 2018, which will talk more about some of the information about the various licensing. I mean, people in the industry that have been around for a while still have issues. What license allows me to do what? So I thought this would provide a little bit of an overview. And uh, again, if you'd like more specifics, please reach out to us at Securities Training Corporation, STC, website, stcusa.com. And my name again is Todd Rosenfeld, and I am the Chief Learning Officer. Thank you for listening to this podcast. See you next time.